Jodes, some things just go well together. Think of a, a freshly shaven pair of legs with some fresh sheets. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Or, or think Pringles and Coke No Sugar because it oh, cancels out the Pringles. You know what I mean? Good. Think um, Jason Horn Francis yeah. and Connor Rosie and Zach Butters. Oh, oh. Well, that's a trio, but anyway. Yeah, okay, I'll get another one for you. Yeah. Kane Corns and Channel 7. Oh! <laughs> Who saw this coming? Here he is. Good morning to you, Kane Corns. Channel 7's Kane Corns. Yeah, well, you and I just work better together, don't we, Hazy? And I've, I've missed you, I've missed you so much that I had to come across to the dark side. Oh. This is how this is interesting, isn't it? I mean, you two obviously used to work together on SEM, and Kane has just been craving you for so long that he's ditched Channel 9 to come to Channel 7 to reunite with you. Isn't it beautiful? I'm Joe's. I miss the Birkenstocks. Yep. I miss him not paying for any coffee. Yep. Oh, silly jokes. I'm missing stuffing up the text number, which he's still doing on your show. So, no, it's great. Honestly, I've been waiting for a month for an invite to come on your show. Waiting by the phone, so yep. I'm happy the call finally came. Well, just, just a heads up as well, Kane. I mean, y- your father, Graham, is a big enough nuisance at the Christmas parties, and <laughs> the amount of times that we've had to cut him off from the bar. Don't you be like your old man, okay? <laughs> There's no risk of me taking up the bar tab at Channel 7. Hey, you know that I'm safe. I'll be on the lemon and ginger kombuchas. But Ooh. yeah, me, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, look, Graham's been um, there for a long time, so to, to go to seven with him as well. I mean, it's been big. It hasn't, I don't know we're having a bit of fun, but it's been a been a big decision. Obviously, Channel 9, I just want to say it's been amazing to me. And the, the Sunday footy show, as you know, Hazy, I love and footy classified. It's been a huge part of my life, but. This is just a big, like, big opportunity to, to um, jump on all the, the big games, the grand final. You know, Thursday night footy is going to be going to be big, and Channel Seven they got big plans. So, and just a little bit more time um, at home on the weekends. Lucy, as you know, has been such an incredible support with the boys. So to be able to have this opportunity and spend a bit more time at home in our beautiful state um, is something I look forward to. Yeah, so we've been saying it for years and years on SEN, but now we can say on a platform where people sort of, maybe there's a few more ears. Uh, you, you don't deserve Lucy, so let's just put you out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. Jodie, what do you think? I oh, mean, she's pretty lucky, isn't she? Oh, you are so batting <laughs> above, Kane Corns. Oh, lucky. I thought, I thought you'd support me. No. Good and bad news here, because you've received a massive pay bump, and Hazy has subsequently <laughs> got a pay cut, so... Joke's that's on you guys. True. I was already <laughs> doing it for free. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kane, before we let you go, I- I've got I've to bring this when to attention. When did you get so funny, by the way? Oh, oh, no. I, I listen to you in the morning, and I'm like, Laughing and dropping the kids to school, like he didn't do this good stuff with me. Yeah, like, no. got the best out of him, Joe. Oh. If I was you and I'd be insecure and I'd put it together and be like, "Why did you get funny when we stopped working together?" <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Hey, Kana, before I let you go, I've just got to make a mention to this to Jody. Um, Kano's rig at the moment. We got to the stage, Kane, okay. where you were so obsessed with running that yeah. you were you'd seen a dietitian. You were bone on bone. We yeah. jokingly suggested at one stage that there was a certain body part of yours, which was a little bit useless because your libido was ruined, that maybe we should just cut it off because it's slowing down your marathon time. I'm so glad that you got past that and now the rig is back. The rig's back. For four years, you were telling me all this. you got to eat eggs. You gotta, you were telling me that well, you're eating bacon and four eggs and getting in the gym. And I was like, oh, that's, right. that's rubbish. I'm just going to keep running. And then I literally went to the physio and the physio looked at me within 30 seconds and said, Kane, you got to go to the gym. And I took his advice, didn't take your advice for four years yeah. and I feel much better about it. So, the only good advice you've ever given me, Hazy. Well, did I did mean, you think he... I was joking when I was calling you a human lollipop? Like, well, what, did you, what did you think? Yeah, I did. I, did. <laughs> I, thought I, looked go- I thought I looked good. I mean, it's very rich to take advice some- from, from someone about hitting the gym and building muscle when he has absolutely got no arse anymore, yeah, Kane. No, you noticed yeah. that? you seen that oh, photo, no. Kane, of uh, the French bulldog who's uh, leaning out. That's how I'm built. No arse. Oh, I did see you in the um, budgie smokers on the diving board, Hazy, and then I saw you rip your hamstring off the bone. So I yeah. am worried about you. Hey, before, I know you guys are busy. Before I let you go, will, I, will this make Jody's diary? Oh, it oh, could I be. I just want one mention. I just need, it's my favourite segment on radio, okay. so just a, well, just a little mention, Jody. Well, yeah. how, how about we isolate this? Can we get you to say, I love Jody's diary? <laughs> I love Jody's diary. Yes! <laughs> you're in. You're in. Oh, Kane, congratulations, mate. Can't wait to work Thank with you. you. And it's a it's a great result for the media. And quite seriously, we love everything you do. And everybody, 100%, all your haters have turned. It's actually quite fascinating to watch. <laughs> love you both. See ya. Take a sip of your coffee. into your seats. This is Adelaide's
Jody and Hazy. Good morning. Welcome to your Tuesday. And we have an official time and date for the Port Adelaide v Geelong final that is happening Thursday week. Not next week, because that would be silly to have any sort of momentum to roll into the finals. Well, you're a good one for turning up to the wrong stadium. Yeah, not Quite bad. often we talk about uh, places and football games coming up, and you're like, oh, I can't oh, wait yeah. till Sunday, Adelaide Oval. And we're like, it's yeah. actually at Marvel Stadium, Joe. It's the yeah. wrong stadium. I do do that a lot. You do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. It's, I mean, there's some things that you do that I don't necessarily enjoy, but that's all right. Don't you dare turn up to Condidia Park <laughs> Thursday <laughs> week. <laughs> Joe's is there. GMHBA Stadium by itself. <laughs> I thought there'd be more people here. Guys, <laughs> why, why is there no pies and chips? Yeah, What's going on? And it's, it's bloody on cold here too, by the way. Yeah, 100%. Not mm. today, though. 23 degrees. Oh, ridiculous. That's perfect, isn't it? Stunning and brave. Oh, I love on the back end of winter when you start to warm up. Finals just around the corner. Things are really, really starting to look It's up, good. It's know? a nice time of year, isn't it? Mm. Netball finals coming up. A um, lot of hungover people today, possibly from a mad Monday yesterday. Oh, yes. Including the Crows boys. So the Crows boys jumping on a bus that were like, some sort of golf theme. Yeah. Where, where were they headed, do you I'm know? I'm not really sure. Ah. It's their business. Just somewhere, somewhere away from the prying eye of the public, I assume. Surrounding some sorrows. Oh, dear. Good on your boys. Mm. Uh, Royal Adelaide show is coming up as well. Yeah. It's exciting. Isn't it? We've got tickets to give away. 7.30 and 8.30 this morning, plus a golden ticket upgrade with our boy DC. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, to say good day, have a last. Taste Afrin Cafe is going to open up. You can absolutely bet your life on that. Oh, and there'll be some quality coffee. 100%. We open up four to five minutes each and every morning. Mm. And boy, oh boy, is it busy in it's that little It's so time profitable. Frame. It's ridiculous. Mm. It, it allows us to close for the next, you know, 23 hours and 56 minutes. <laughs> we just sit there. We just count cash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what we do. It's crazy, isn't it? And the 6.15 vending machine quiz, not too far away. Three very reasonable questions with some outstanding prizes. Mm. Coming up next, we'll keep it somewhat footy-related. What about the hooligan on the weekend that got done throwing a water bottle at an umpire? Oh, my God. We've all thought it, but you shouldn't act on it. Do you no, know what no, I mean? No, no, one should act on that. Yeah. Well, the police have caught up with him. Got a new little study for you, Joe. It's cool. probably going to hurt you because sometimes you're a bit of a psycho. Let's be honest. We're in an honest space. Sometimes you lose it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. You're so lovely. Do you know the only time I lose it is during songs to song, 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 because <gasps> you, my friend, tip me over the edge. That is so true, and that is coming up before 8 o'clock. Mm. So take this advice, all okay. right? A study conducted by the University of California found that each time you resist the urge to act on anger, you actively rewire your brain to become calmer and more compassionate. Oh. Right? So think about that before you play songs to song, song, song. <laughs> this process known as neuroplasticity strengthens neural pathways associated with self-control and empathy while simultaneously weakening those linked to impulsive anger responses. So the nicer you are in these situations where you're really tested, mm. maybe it's a flow-on effect and all of a sudden you're doing it more often and you're less angry. Hey, all those words you just said, did you understand them? I knew, um, I knew anger, but I didn't, know what, I didn't know what the word empathy meant. Yeah, yeah, no, we understand that. Neuroplasticity? Yeah, yeah, everyone knows what neuroplasticity is, right? Um, what about these words as well? By engaging in prefrontal cortex, the area of the brain responsible for decision making and emotional regulation, you can develop a more measured and thoughtful approach to handling emotional triggers and ultimately fostering a more composed and compassionate mindset. That's the front part of your brain that controls your emotions. Right. So, so that's why it's the first thing to go when you drink alcohol. Is that is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at you, Dr. Roddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, take a deep breath. Let's just relax. Talking to you, Crow supporters. Crows were robbed. Right in front of me. Right in front of Stop me. Stop getting angry, guys. There's always next year. And then this time next year, there's the year after. Yeah. So I'm like, it was sort of calm vibe back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't get angry at all unless I'm watching the football. And I swear I had this approach. I'm like, just relax, just relax. And then all of a sudden, bloody umpires! Oh. You're ruining the game! Every single time. Really? Actually, this is very, very ironic in the words of the great Alanis Morissette because you, my friend, have the least anger control of everyone, anyone I know. Excuse me very much. And it's over nothing, like absolutely nothing. Like you'll pick up your phone and you'll go, Mommy! and we'll be like, what? And you'll be like, I only got four on my tips. <laughs> 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 tips is a different story. Don't mess with tips. Like, 
The biggest overreaction you ever will see, my friend. It came into effect yesterday, a brand new work law. Yeah. And that is the right to disconnect. Legally protecting workers from being forced to take non-emergency calls and respond to emails outside of business hours. <laughs> Thoughts on this? It's effectively a way to, like, put the hit the red button when your boss calls on the weekend. Yeah. 100%. Don't have to take it. Employers of large companies can refuse to respond to unreasonable after-hours calls from their employer if the call or email is not required to be answered by law. Reasonableness will be judged by the worker's job responsibility level, how disruptive the contact was and whether they were compensated. The employer can f- get fined up to 19800 for making an unreasonable call or request see, outside of isn't hours. Isn't that such a grey area, what's reasonable and what's unreasonable when it comes to your job? Yeah, 100%. Because if, if someone's stuck at work doing something that only you know how to mm. fix, then isn't it perfectly reasonable and nice for you to take that call and go, okay, this is how you do that and that's how you do that? Possibly. Maybe. But now you're not really allowed to do that. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I can't. I couldn't do it. What do you mean? I don't even have any. I have I've no missed calls, no unread messages. I have no unread emails. Right. Everything needs to be ticked off. So if I had an email from a boss going into weekend mm. and it was something that I could fix, I'd just fix it. Otherwise, it'd just sit in my brain for the whole weekend. I'd be thinking about it. Somebody needs some boundaries. Yes, we've had this conversation. <laughs> Cara, my one. <laughs> Good, good on you though, Joe, for being ahead of your time. <laughs> and you, you have been ahead of your time for so long. So, Shut up. producer Emily, producer Emily, I'm pretty sure you can back me up here. Oh, just, okay. just tell me if I'm right or wrong when here I say, go. when I say, here is a conversation that you will hear almost daily in Nova 919, and it goes like this: Jody says, "What the hell is this? Where is this information?" And producer Emily says. It's Jodes, it's in, in your, your emails. emails. I don't even have to say it anymore. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've just got a recording that plays in the office yeah. every time, and I just press a little button, yeah. and it just says, Jodes, read your emails. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. So okay. congratulations, Jodes. Well done. A pioneer, some You're a would trailblazer. Say. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're a workplace trailblazer. Wowie. Okay, can I can I explain to you, no. peanuts, Here we go. that I have, I have an email. Here I have an email at Channel 10. I have an email from my business, and I have a personal email. That's four email boxes. Can I be bothered to peruse all of them at any given time? No, I cannot. There are other ways to contact me. You can direct message me on Instagram if you like. (laughs) You can send me a Facebook message. There's a million different ways to contact me. If I need to know something, you can make me aware. Yeah, so if you need to get a message through to Jody as well, Oh, send the pigeon. No, no, deliver it through the jagged website. Yeah. In the shopping cart. I'll get it then. <laughs> You'll find me there frequently. Wake up, wake up with Jody and Hazy on Nova. It's a constant battle, isn't it? Mm. Between uh, people who are a little bit old school with their language and the youth coming through with their new sort of buzzwords. Oh, yeah. Remember when radical was the buzzword? Oh, my God. <laughs> Coolies. Coolio. And you, will, you still say, to be fair, all things Coolio Iglesias. All things Coolio Iglesias. <laughs> Hang 10, all that kind of stuff. (laughs) What about this? A primary school in Australia has banned students from using Gen Alpha. They're they're, they're young'uns. Gen Alpha. Gen Alphas? I haven't even heard of them. It's banned using uh, slang words and phrases like, which we've spoken about, skibbity and giat, but also mewing, sigma and riz. All these sort of buzzwords. So the list displayed at an unidentified primary school features 11 banned words or phrases. Popular with Generation Alpha. And we in this team have someone who is heavily right in the guts of Generation no, Alpha. I am not. I don't claim it. <laughs> 11 years old. <laughs> I technically am Gen Z, but I don't claim that either. But Gen yeah. Alpha is, I think they're born from 2012. Oh. Jesus <laughs> age. I oh, know, oh, they're little. <laughs> they're little. What? <laughs> well, people having kids in 2012. <laughs> Unbelievable sounds. All right, let's take uh, you through a few of these yep. words and our resident child will give you the meaning <laughs> okay. of them. Okay, once again, which we've which you covered on, but in short, skibbity. Skibbity came from a meme. It's a toilet. Skibbity. It can mean good or bad. You can right. go, this is skibbity, so, and it depends on the feeling. Skibbity, right. Yeah. Riz? Riz is like charm, charisma, flirtatiousness. Uh-huh. If you've got good riz, you've got game. Oh, oh, okay. You ain't got good you ain't riz. Got riz. I have got riz, ladies. <laughs> 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 um, Sigma? Sigma is one that I had to look up when it first started making the rounds, but it essentially means like you're a cool dude, like an alpha male. Oh. Like you're cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm a rizzed up Sigma. It's like, oh. 
<laughs> or does that make like the opposite? No, no, that's okay. This is going to show my age, but a Sigma was a car that your mum and dad used to drive oh, back in the yeah. 80s. <laughs> and then you updated to the Datsun. That. Yeah. Uh, mewing? Mewing is more of a thing you do, not a word. Okay. But mewing is... cats do. It's how you... Mew. <laughs> Oh, boomers. It's so you put, your, <laughs> you put your tongue to the roof of your mouth and you kind of flex it to make your jawline tighter. Oh, okay. Oh. So mewing is about looking good. Um, What's the point of that, though? Yeah. To make your sharp jawline. Oh, oh God. God. Lord. <laughs> um, Ohio? Okay, another one that's a little bit more niche, but if, if, if you say that's so Ohio, it's like really lame and cringe. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's so Ohio. Why don't you say lame or cringe? Yeah, it's like extra no, effort to say Ohio. Just like, that's Ohio, you know. Okay. It's cooler, hazy. Um, let him cook? What does that mean? <laughs> like, let him go. Let him do it. Okay, he's, cool. he's cooking something up. And finally, what's a baddie? <laughs> a baddie is like, you're, you're a little baddie, you know? Like, Cardi B's a baddie. Right, okay. Oh, yeah. Of course she is. Of course she is. Yeah, Zoe in Europe for summer, baddie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let her cook all those types of things. Let her, let her cook <laughs> it up. <laughs> Meow. Right, That's could, all I've taken away from that. Now just, uh, just Kids check, are cats. If this makes me a, um, a, a Sigma rizzed up male, oh, if I say God. this sentence. Yeah. Ohio, Jody and Hazy are bussin'. Bussin's a good one. Bussin's a good one? Bussin's good. What does that mean? If something's bussin', it's good. Ooh. Usually referred to with food, though. That okay. food's bussin'. Jody is a baddie and Hazy is great on the barbecue. Let him cook. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Skip it <in. laughs> Jody and Hazy. What an intense, fierce battle it is becoming. It's not close, oh. but it is an intense battle. Oh, Joe. Okay, so um, everyone playing along at home, I resolve this week to not give him the answers because it hurts my soul, it hurts all of your souls. I understand that. So if I think I know it, I'm not going to think out loud anymore. I'm just going to zip it. It's here. <laughs> Thinking out loud. Think <laughs> <laughs> I think we're on this morning. Oh I think dear, I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah. All right. Welcome, producer Zoe. Good morning. All right, Team Jody today is Briny from Joslin. Good morning, Briny. Morning. Good morning. Briny got three first and chose you, Jody. Oh, no pressure. Briny, thank you. Ooh. Ah, first time listening. You're welcome. And good morning, Briny. <laughs> oh my god. Stop being a smart ass. Morning. Oh, sorry. Stop being a smart ass. I'm an obnoxious boy. My dad was obnoxious. My grandfather's obnoxious. <laughs> it's a long line of All ob- the obnoxious, obnoxious hazemen. <laughs> well. <laughs> On team Hazeman is Jess from Tea Tree Gully. <laughs> uh, welcome, Good morning. To the, welcome to the dark side, Jess. There you yeah. go, Jess. Good luck. I'm sorry you hitched your wagon to the long line of obnoxious Hazeman. Hazeman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, I think we should go see Despicable Me 4. What do you think? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm down for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Someone's banked the movie tickets. All, All right, right. Yeah. I get it. There okay. is... A comeback train coming, though, Joe. Okay. It's choo-choo. 11 to 19 <laughs> at the moment. So you've got a bit of work to do. But if you stop giving away the answers, you're in for it. Thank you're you. You're in for a win. And also remember, my name is my brother. Um, oh, my God, both of you. Your name is your brother. Oh, no, okay. no screaming. So do you want to explain the rule? Yeah. Same as always. Nova hits, throwbacks, orchestralize. It is best of three. The stakes are high. Wallace, a cinema pass up for grabs. But this, these, these ones are interesting. Okay. One of them I think is really easy. One I think is really hard. The other one's neutral. Mm. Mm. I won't tell you which ones. Song number one, let's do it. Jodie, who knew pink? Well done, Jodie. That's a really good. I didn't even get it. I'm still trying to work it out. (laughs) Can you not interrupt me? I'm still trying to work it out. That was really good, Jodes. You were really composed. Jody, yeah. Look at you go. You took big, deep breaths. I did. That was really good. I did. Wow. If, you, if you get this one, you've won. Just don't say that. No don't pressure. That. Don't All get right. ahead of myself. Oh, oh, my God. This is everything for you. Shush. This is everything, okay? <laughs> All right. It's everything for me as well, because if you lose, um, 8 to 9.15 is going to be pretty it's ordinary. It's going to be real grim. <laughs> right, here, we go. here we go. Song two. I know who it is. This one's tricky. I know it. Mm. Do you know is it, Jodie? Is it, is it Jodie? I'm going to say, is it Austin Dasher? No, no it's, it's not. Keep going, Hazy. See if you can bring we, this one home. Do we get one guess and that's yeah, it? Yeah, Jodie's out. Um, oh, it's Noah Khan. Song name? Oh, I know, I know it! I know it now! 
Oh, I know it. Come on, three. Two, Stick season. One. Yeah. Oh. That was a long time. I counted, though. He was within the countdown. You counted to 28. It's a 28-second countdown. Okay. Wow. This was him. It's Noah Khan. (laughs) I know it. It'll come to me eventually if I pad out long enough. (laughs) Oh, it's Dick Season. Makes Uh, things interesting, though, because we're at a tiebreak now. Unrelated. Um, How you going on there, News Red (laughs) Abbey? Abs always gets them pretty quickly and has (laughs) immense frustration in there. All right, this is for the win. Okay. Song number three. Jody, go on. Is it YMCA by the village people? Yeah, well done. (laughs) (laughs) She's done it. Yeah. (laughs) Go, JD. (gasps) And Uh, great choice by Bryony. (laughs) Bryony, against the odds. How did you know? Matthew. Oh. Miss Matthew. Oh, my gosh. You've got it, Joe. Well done. Oh, oh, thank you. I could cry. Thank you for my face. <laughs> thank you for your faith in me. Oh. It brings the score to 12-19. Wow. She's on the comeback. There you go. Just jump out before you say anything yeah, more. Just leave no, it. Jump wasn't. out. Apologise to Jess first oh. and then jump out. Jess, I'm sorry about that, Jess. Next time, eh? Nah. Oh, no. <laughs> like, oh. There won't be a next time. She's angry just like me. That's awesome. Congratulations to you, Jodes. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to be humble because I need Battle of the Bangers. <laughs> <laughs> we are celebrating the life of one of the all-time greats. And when I say greats, I mean it was a great speech. Ah, uh, yes. I see that you know your judo well. Jack Carlson. <laughs> Jack Carlson. This is Democracy Manifest. We loved him. Um, anyway, that was him being arrested in 1991 for fraud, but his arrest, well, it basically became ingrained in our psyches forevermore. Yeah. He passed away. Um, they had his funeral yesterday. And incredibly, this is what they did for Jack right before he passed. Jack was 82, died last month of advanced prostate cancer. His family revealing before they switched off life support, they tipped his favourite wine into his feeding tube. Well, Chris Ray isn't on 7 News there, probably perplexed as well, being like, well, they did what? But also, wine straight into your veins. That would have an immediate effect, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? So you're cutting mm. out the middleman, aren't you? Mm. Straight in there. Definitely. Uh, so we're asking the question on 13 24 10, what would you have in your feeding tube right before you're about to pass away? You just want a bit of Jason Horn Francis. If we'll get straight into the veins. Yeah. Straight into the veins. Yeah. And you know me, Joe. Horn Francis outside of the boot. Could he? Yes, he could. Ah, uh, boop, die happy man. <laughs> Let's go to Roxy from Jervis. Hello, Roxy. Hello. Hello. Good morning, guys. Tell us, hit us, what do you want? Scotch and Coke. Oh, there you go. Scotch and Coke. Has to be, has to be chilled, though, with ice. And, yeah, got to season me, base me for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect, Roxy. I just love the doctors going... She's ready to go now. <laughs> She's ready to go now. <laughs> uh, a particular scotch? What are we talking, Roxy? Oh, Johnny Jogger. Gotta love a good old Johnny Jogger. Johnny Jogger. Oh, okay. <laughs> love that for you, Roxy. Thank you so much for your call. Uh, Tamara from Seaton. Good morning. Good morning. Tamara, what do you want in your veins before you go? Well, there's two things. One would be probably a whole heap of Nutella. Yes. Or <laughs> I'd probably go salt. Yeah. I so Jodes, you are aggressive with your salt, salt and pepper. Fiend. <laughs> Tomorrow, do you do you salt absolutely everything? I do, and before I go to bed, I put a whole heap of salt in my hand and I lick it. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's taking it definitely to the next level. Well done. Wait, is that a, is that associated with the tequila shot or just the salt? No, nah, just the salt. It, I don't if, drink alcohol. <laughs> if I was to pick up an eye, a, a salt lick, which traditionally is for horses, and place it at your house, do you think that you would get through an entire block of salt lick? Yeah, I'll put it on the bedside cupboard too. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask a controversial question? What's a salt lick? Salt lick. It's mm. how you use it for horses. So it's a big block <laughs> and it's literally salt and the horses lick it. What does it do to the horse? Oh, it gives them the salt kick that they need. Yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know horses needed salt. There you go. Well, they do. Okay. And they lick it up. All right. In Thanks, tablet Tamara. Form. Good uh, stuff, Tamara. Well, 
Well, there you go. Mm. That's nice, isn't it? Uh, what we have learnt as well is that uh, our great friend Jack Carlson... Ah, uh, yes. I see that you know your judo well. ...will 100% live in our hearts forever. Do horses have pepper licks too? I think they do. Okay. I think they do. Watch this space.